This is my new box. Um, it's a looper that also has internal sounds. I built it to replace my iPad for live use. Um, nothing against the iPad, um, but I was just basically running a pure data sketch on or a patch on the iPad and I wanted to actually build a hardware unit for it. Just a standalone dedicated piece of hardware. Um, it is uh, pure data is running on a Raspberry Pi 3 in there. Um, pretty close to the same patch I was running on the iPad and had to modify it a little bit. And then there's also a Teensy 3.6 which handles all of the controls and the screen information and it communicates with the Pi through serial. There's also this uh, Behringer U control in there. Uh, it's the same one that you can kind of see over here. I'm using that right now to record all of the audio for this video. But that's essentially what's inside of this thing and it's just connected USB to the Pi. Um, so yeah, quickly uh, let's go over the sounds inside of here. Uh, holding this button down, the buttons act as a sound selector. The bottom row here are just all drum kits. As you hold it down, um, <clears throat> there's little graphics that kind of show you what you have. I'm not sure if that's shown up on the video, but it has the name of whatever instrument you have, as well as a little kind of graphical representation. So these are all drum, drum banks. They're all uh, sample based. And then let's get into the actual synthesis. There's three leads. And then the rest of these use the FM synthesis. And they actually all use the same engine. Um, so yeah, these are pads. some bass. Then these are kind of like keys. Kind of electric piano-y. It's kind of a bell sound. So yeah, those are all the internal sounds. You can also bring in, um, there's an input for bringing stuff into it. But then here are all the effects. I uh, quickly go through. First two are delay. It's kind of got like a tape, date, tape delay. So time and feedback. The time will synchronize to the loop if you have a loop going. Uh, next one. Reverb. Then we have a cutoff. Um, then down here we have a ring modulator. Then lo fi. I guess a bit crusher. And distortion. And this is kind of like a beat repeater thing. I'll actually put it on a drum track. Uh, this will choose the time. And as you hold this down, it actually engages it. So. So yeah, and that actually synchronizes. Um, with a loop when you have one going as well. But when you don't, it's just a free free time. <clears throat> these are the actual loop buttons, and then these are the volume controls for the loops. So I guess quickly I could just start up a loop. Uh, we'll just do kind of a short one. And 
then once you have a loop going, it sets the BPMs, and then the delays and stuff will will uh, synchronize to it. Then when you have one loop, when you hit another one, it'll do a pending, it'll go yellow, and then when it actually starts recording, it'll turn red. I'm not sure how well you can see the screen on any of these, but um, you have a little indicator as far as where you are in the loop. That also changes color when it's pending and recording. Uh, there's also a little graphical representation of the loop, and uh, if it's muted or not. I guess you can kind of see that on the screen. You can't really see the colors of the loops, but um, the LEDs actually match the graphical representation here. So there we go, we have a loop going, it's just a couple, just two, two loops. Um, so once you have one going, you have, also have this screen here, which is a, actually a Nintendo DS um, resistive touchscreen. And it does like beat repeat and cut off. And then there's also two like post loop effects, so. So it does that in time. So the Y position is the cutoff. The X is like the beat repeat. And then once that's that's on, you can also do a reverb. And then there's also a bit crusher. Anyway, that's the start and stop of the actual loop. Uh, these two buttons here are just to bring in, whoa, hello, um, the external inputs. One of, one of them is my microphone right now. So that's why you got the little double and then uh, these are just the volumes for the inputs, and that's just the left and right in into the Behringer U control in the back. Uh, then we got a clear button and a start stop and main volume. Now uh, this guy is an encoder, which you can use to dive into the menu and load up songs. So actually, let's do that really quick. So you just press it down. You got save load song, and it gives you, you know, your song names. I have a bunch of stuff saved in here for my live set. So just press on it. You can do cancel, load, save, or overwrite, and delete, which actually deletes the directory. So let's go ahead and load. Takes a minute sometimes to load the songs, and this is one of my my live kind of backing tracks. So this might be loud, but. So, yeah, um, you can just mute and unmute the loops, bring them in and out. You can also hold a button to <clears throat> to clear an individual loop. Uh, and just, whoop, now that, that one's not there and you can now record onto that guy. So, yeah. That's about everything. Um, the ins and outs back here. It's just that the, all the audio connections are from the, the Behringer U control, so we have RCA in and out. Um, I also brought the headphone jack out to the back. I didn't bring the uh, optical out because I don't really need it. But uh, this connection here, which I'm not sure if you can see on either of these cameras, but this actually goes to these uh, NeoPixel LEDs that I have. And it, uh, you might be able to see those on some of the cameras, but I'll do a different angle. And you can see them. They respond to the amplitude of whatever sound this thing is generating. And then there's a USB. This actually actually synchronizes with um, my girlfriend's setup, who is running the the Pure Data patch on her iPad that I made. So this thing will actually synchronize with hers. So either one of us can start and start a loop, and the other person will get the BPMs, and everything will be synchronized. Uh, this is just a headphone out and then we just have the last USB here is for power. There's also a button back here which I'm not going to go into why that's there. It's not really important but um, yeah.
So, all right, I think I managed to do that in about 10 minutes or so. That's just a really brief overview. And then I think I'll record a quick, quick jam session so you can kind of see it all working together.